Let's walk through the basics of the Fusion 360 CAM tool library. So what is the tool library? Tool library is a way of saving speeds and feeds in certain tools that you commonly use to pull those up when you go to machine your parts. First thing I recommend is using the cloud libraries. To do that, go to your name, preferences, click on CAM, and enable cloud libraries. This will ensure that your tool libraries are shared across any computer you use Fusion 360 with. To open the tool library, make sure you're in the CAM environment and click on this folder right here. There are two things that we commonly do in the tool library. One would be we pull a tool out of our library that we've already set up, like for instance, this quarter inch twist drill that's inside the Saunders Machine Works Tormach Alumina Master Library. You can download this library on the NYC CNC website. So if we're programming a new part and it has a quarter inch hole in aluminum, I can pull this drill up and I'm good to go. The second most common thing would be to create a new tool. So let's walk through both of those. This window on the left is really important. You've got your documents, you've got your cloud, and you've got samples, vendors, and local. I really care about documents and cloud. And let me explain the difference. Cloud is your permanent libraries. So we try to keep these pretty clean. For example, we've got a library for our Tormach aluminum, for Tormach steel, for our Haas VM3. And again, this is something where we've invested time to create recipes that we know work. So I'll open up tool 31 by right clicking and editing the tool. It's a carbide end mill that's three flutes. We should add the vendor description and that's something we're gonna go through and add to make it clear who to reorder it from or to make sure you've got the correct tool, diameter, flute length, etc. The most important part is the feeds and speeds. Here we're able to program how fast we wanna run the tool and at what feed per tooth or inch per tooth. Lastly, post-processor. This relates to what tool number it posts as when you post it to your machine. And if you're new to CNC, take a look at our videos on setting tool heights so that you understand how this number corresponds to setting the tool height in PathPilot or at your machine controller. But again, the nice thing is if I'm going to create a new 2D adaptive clearing, and let's say I pick this area here, and I want to pick the tool, I'll go to select the tool, and I'll open up the Tormach library by clicking on it. And I can move down and I can pick that tool 31 and it's gonna pull in those speeds and feeds that it remembers. You'll notice though, something really important happens when I do that. If I open up the tool library again, that tool has now been moved in to my document library. And this is why I mentioned the two things that are really important are the cloud folder and the document folder. When you pull a tool into a Fusion 360 CAM operation, like we just did here, Fusion 360 creates a copy of that tool. So in other words, it sort of copies it out of your master library and it puts it into, it calls it the documents. Unfortunately, that's a, a poor name. It should really just be your Fusion file. So we have instances of that tool inside this file. The nice thing about that is I could now change some of those speeds and feeds and I'm not affecting the master recipe. Generally, this is a good thing because I may want to tweak those speeds and feeds for this part. It can be confusing if you're also saying, you know what, I want to override that tool for everything going forward because I found a new recipe that I want to use all of the time. To do that, you would need to go back to the master library and edit that tool. So those tools are now basically two separate tools. To create a new tool in your tool library, the first thing you need to do is you think about, is this a tool I'm only using for this job or this part? Or is it a tool I wanna to have permanently in my library? If it's just for this job, put it in the documents. If it's just for this job, put it in the file name for those documents. But let's say we're gonna create a new half inch end mill that we wanna use going forward, sort of a permanently set up tool. I'll click on the Tormach Aluminum Library in this case, and I'll click New Mill Tool. 
Let's move to the first tab cutter. Flat end mill. Carbide. Three flutes. We'll call it lake shore. We'll fill in the rest of this information later. Diameter, 0 0.5. Flute length, 1 inch. Shoulder length. Normally for me, I consider the shoulder length the same as the flute length unless it's necked. We'll get into that in some future videos. Body length is important. This is how much is of the tool is sticking out from the holder. I like to choke up on my tools, so I'm going to say that that's 1.1 inches. This is important because Fusion can tell you, assuming you model this correctly, if your tool goes so low that the holder or collet or nut is itself is going to crash into your workpiece. Shaft, I tend not to worry about. Likewise, holder. Feeds and speeds. Let's say we're going to run this tool at 300 surface feet per minute and 0 0.0015 inches per tooth. A lot of times I will increase the ramp feed rate, something a little bit higher, and we can plunge at 0 0.003 feed per revolution. Last tab, post-processor. Let's say this tool is going to be tool number 36, and we'll put in the comment, one half inch lake shore ALU tool. This comment is what shows up in the G code when you post your code. We'll put in demo just so you can see that. Click OK. So we've now created tool 36 inside our permanent library. Let's say we want to change this 2D adaptive to make use of that tool. Right click, edit, select the tool. I'm going to move over to my cloud library, Tormach Aluminum, and I'll double click on that tool 36. It updated it here, it pulled in the feeds and speeds, click OK, and when I post that code, you'll see that the description that we gave it at the end shows up as a commented line in your G code. Thanks for watching, folks. Take a look again in the page for this video where we've got a link to some more advanced tool library videos, including tips and tricks and best practices.